Okay, so hi, I'm going to present OpenDHT. Uh, so OpenDHT, it's, uh, it's a project that we started developing along with Ring. Uh, so we presented Ring uh, half an hour ago uh, in the privacy room. Um, so first of all, who knows what a DHT is? Just to have an, an idea. Okay, maybe half to third of the room. Um, okay, so OpenDHT, it's a distributed hash table. Um, and who knows what a hash table is? <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, the the most the most the most known uh, DHT uh, implementation existing is used is is the BitTorrent mainline DHT. It's used by BitTorrent uh, to find other people uh, who have a, a given torrent. So if you've ever seen uh, magnet links online uh, for torrents, so magnet links are actually keys on the distributed hash table that is used by BitTorrent. And bit, the distributed hash table will, will provide provides a global shared uh, dictionary. And in the case of BitTorrent, th this dictionary will be a dictionary will be, will between, so it's a mapping between the key, so the key is the ma magnet link and the value is the IP address of people having this torrent. So when you uh, have a torrent, you will perform a put operation on the DHT with your own IP address. So it will be added to the list of IP addresses. So when you want to download a magnet link, a torrent, you will perform a get operation on this same key and retrieve the list of IP addresses from people who previously performed that put operation to register the IP address. And that's how you will have the list of peers that you will then reach uh, uh, directly in peer-to-peer -peer, uh, to exchange files. So we use the same idea for a ring to join people and establish peer-to-peer -peer, uh, communications with them. Uh, but the uh, DHT implementation used by BitTorrent was too limited. Uh, so for instance, the IP addresses that were, st that were stored were uh, in clear. Uh, we wanted to have them encrypted in ring we also uh, wanted to store uh, more kind of data different than IP addresses. Um, so basically, any kind of encrypted or even uh, plain text data can be stored uh, on OpenDHD. Uh, so we still uh, um, we still beginning we still begin by uh, forking uh, an existing implementation of the BitTorrent mainline DHT. Uh, and we extended it and improved it. Uh, so it's, a, it's still Academia style DHT, just like the mainline BitTorrent DHT. So Academia is just the routing algorithm used uh, in the background to know uh, which node should store which data, and what is the algorithm to uh, look for those nodes. Uh, so Academia means that the Academia algorithm means that Operations will have a complexity of uh, log of n, and n is the size of the network, so the number of nodes in the network. So it's kind of very efficient. I mean, compared to other uh, distributed algorithm, it's very efficient. Um, but the downside of it is that there's no guarantee. Uh, it's a best default uh, network. Um, yeah. So for this reason, every data is stored on eight different nodes, so every data, every value stored in the dictionary has a redundancy of eight to uh, allow people to disconnect at any time and still preserving the, the value on the distributed uh, network, on the, on the shared uh, dictionary. Um, so, yeah, uh, the DHT from the user perspective provide access as I mentioned, to a shared global uh, dictionary. So it's uh, key value pairs, actually. You can have multiple values for the same uh, key. So it's a multi-map, uh, the structure. Um, like, I, like every map, there are two very uh, basic operations you can do in it. You can retrieve values for a given key, or you can store a new key, a new value, sorry, for a given key. Uh, so the, this is the get and put operations. And uh, for OpenDHT, we also introduced a new operation that is the listen operation. Uh, so the listen operation is the, like the, the get operation 
except that it will um, it's non-blocking and it will uh, inform the user when there are new values stored on a given key. Uh, so instead of just retrieving the keys at a instead of just retrieving the values at a given key at some specific time, you will just uh, wait and listen for new values being stored at that key, and that that is used by Ring to listen for uh, incoming messages, incoming calls, uh, without doing pooling and without uh, reading values on the DHT. Uh, on a regular basis, uh, so it's much more in energy efficient uh, and, and it reduces uh, network consumption. So uh, OpenDHT, it's, uh, it's written in C++11. We, uh, we forked a C code and we uh, improved it and made it uh, in the C++11 so we can, for instance, have multiple nodes running in the same programs and this kind of things, use uh, lambdas to have callbacks and uh, yeah, this kind of thing, and we also have Python bindings, so OpenDHT can be used very uh, easily in, in a very straightforward way uh, by any Python program. Uh, it's a Python tree binding. Okay, so recently we uh, introduced new features uh, to OpenDHT. Uh, so they were introduced along with uh, the new version of Ring that we presented uh, in the, the previous pre presentation. Uh, so the major new feature is the DHT proxy. So uh, when you run a node, it will be a local node running on your computers and connecting to other nodes on the distributed network. But this will consume resources. Uh, maybe every few seconds, there, there will be some packets exchanged with other nodes to preserve the network connectivity. Um, and maybe you will receive some messages from other nodes. Uh, make sure that you're still there to store values uh, on your local node. So this might not be viable depending on your uh, requirements. On mobile devices, for instance, um, it's not really viable to have a, a DHT node running 24-7 uh, because when your phone is in your pocket, it wants to sleep. If it doesn't, it will just draw the battery uh, progressively because the DHT will just keep maintaining the, the, the radio uh, active. It will uh, keep the CPU uh, and the OS active because it will have to wake up on a regular basis to handle the packets. and do pr Even if it's a very small uh, amount of processing, it will just keep uh, stuff uh, running and it will draw the battery. So uh, there's the need to have a a proxy, so the the DHT node could as, could actually be running on an, another computer, and uh, the DHT will completely transparently redirect every operation to the distant node, uh, without any change uh, from the code using the DHT node. And we even have the ability to switch on runtime between a local node and the proxy. And this was because maybe we want on a mobile device to use the local node if the device is connected to power or on Wi-Fi and switch to a remote node if uh, we are on 3G or disconnected from power. And this will allow to uh, have the most distributed possible network while, while still uh, yeah, improving the power consumption when we are not connected to the power. Uh, so, yeah, we also had the ability to have push notification with OpenDHT. It, it allows us to, to use, uh, for example, an application on iOS. You, you can't have a node H24 on the iOS uh, device. So, because Apple will, will kill your app. So, with push notification, you can ask the proxy to send a wake up notification to to wake up your application and retrieve uh, the value from the DHT. Uh, we also rework on the protection on DDoS things. So for the proxy, it's just a simple REST API, API which is uh, described on the wiki, and you can switch. Uh, to so let's have a little demo. Uh, 
where is my okay. uh, we have a proxy on dht proxy dot ring dot six uh, for eight thousand so um since the DHT proxy API is a, it's a REST API, so we wrote a simple DHT client uh, in, uh, in, in web with JavaScript. Uh, so the proxy API actually also enables the use of DHT from uh, web apps. So web apps can connect to the proxy server through the REST API and use perform operation on the, the DHT. Uh, so I will use the proxy to, to put some value on the uh, random hash. So yep. it takes some time. <laughs> and after that, uh, I can get values from the DHT. So this is retrieving from, from the proxy. And we also have uh, listen capability. Uh, so if I put, we will uh, have a real-time uh, streaming. So this is for the demo. Um, uh, yeah, for the push notification, we use a gateway. For the gateway, we use a Gorush uh, REST API. It's uh, open source and under MIT license uh, push gateway. And the thing is we, we want the push notification systems as distributed as possible, but push notification is centralized by, by default because you have a, what we call a push provider, like a FCM for Android or APN for Apple. And you need to authenticate your notification to that the push provider. So you need to store a key or a password somewhere. So we we have a push gateway hosted by Savoirfaire Linux. It's push.ring.cx. And uh, this central server you store the data, uh, the key and the pa passwords for APN or FCM. So each node can create a notification with uh, just a, a device ID and ask the push gateway to send a, a wake-up notification or a timeout notification if the listen expired. So this, this is the new feature for OpenDHT 1.6. Uh, if you have any question, you are, you are free to ask. And thank you. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, uh, so you can have, um, of course, yeah, it, it, you, yeah. So the network starts at two nodes. You can have two, two nodes, and it works. For I mean, it works even better if there are less nodes. It's a log of n, so it's faster. If, uh, it's a bit faster if you have a small, smaller network. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, for example, text messages for ring. Okay, uh, he asked if the a value on the DHT have an expiration time. So, yeah, for example, for ring, 
if you send a text messages after five minutes, it will be de deleted from the DHT. So, uh, oh, poisoning. Uh, yeah. So every value will expire at some point, uh, but yeah. So the, the 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 question was: Is there a mechanism to avoid poisoning of the DHT? Uh, yeah. So it's part of the value expiration system. So um, uh, actually, uh, we have some uh, mechanisms so that if some given IP address floods the DHT, uh, it will not have priority for values. So if some other IP will want to store a value, then so there is a maximum uh, value, so it's 8 megabytes per node. And so if 8 megabytes in memory are used, uh, then the values from the IP using the most storage will be dropped. Uh, I mean, the oldest value from the node who stored the most data will be dropped to avoid the, yeah, the poisoning and, um, but yeah. Uh, the question is basically, uh, do do we have an entry point to the uh, to the network? And yeah, we have bootstrap dot ring dot six. It's the entry point of the uh, ring uh, open DHT network. Uh, you need to connect your node to to the uh, to the network. So you need uh, any entry point on the server. Yeah. Yeah. So just a precision, you don't have to connect to bootstrap.ring.six. You can use any any running node on the DHT network as an entry point. It's just that bootstrap.ring.six is a known running node of the network. So you can use this re reliably to connect to the network. But if you know some other node running, you could also this, use this other node to connect. Uh, so the question is, what's the maximum size of uh, a value on the open DHT? Uh, we limit a value to uh, 64 kilobytes. Yeah, so we are based on the BitTorrent uh, DHT, which is uh, the, the largest DHT, uh, I mean, maybe the largest distributed network ac actually running in the world. They have more than 10 million nodes. Uh, so they use the Kademlia, uh, it's a Kademlia style DHT, just like us, actually, we are based on the same uh, alg basic algorithm. And so it's, yeah, it, 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 it runs, if you, you can download a file using BitTorrent, if you have a magnet link, it will be between probably less than five seconds to get the list of peers from the DHT. And it's similar to what we observe in, in, the, in the DHT in our DHT. Uh, almost always under 10 seconds, and most of the time less than three seconds uh, to, for a get operation to, to retrieve a value. Yeah, of course, there are multiple kind of uh, DHT networks, like CORD, uh, but yeah, the, we, we just use uh, the mainline Kademlia DHT style. Uh, 